Hey guys, there's Optech here. Today we're going to be having another vlog about um, tech narcissism. I'm going to go talk about what it is, um, why it's bad for people, and I guess the community at large, um, how you can prevent it, and uh, obviously the definition. I have a little note card here with all my stuff, so uh, I have to look back at it occasionally because I don't actually rehearse these videos. These are just me talking to you guys. So, tech narcissism. Um, the reason I want to talk about this is just because recently in the community, you have a lot of techs getting at the end into Airsoft. And so, um, teching is a more of a personality type. It's not really much of something that someone can just jump into. Though I think people can learn how to tech. I know I'm not saying you have to be gifted. I'm just saying that you have to have a mechanical inclination that some people don't have. And so, um, for Airsoft, I think that might be a little bit broader because teching is not as hard as, say, um, being a computer engineer or something. The uh, amount of people that can be a computer engineer is smaller than the amount of people who can be an uh, airsoft tech, but they kind of fit in the same bracket as thinking mathematically, mechanically, and logically. And so um, this is prevalent on airsoft tech and Q&A on Facebook and on a ton of uh, airsoft forums as well, at least back in the day when airsoft forums were kind of popular. Uh, they're not so popular anymore because Facebook is pretty much the one size fits all for everything. So for a lot of stuff at least. Um, for example, a lot of media sites like uh, Huffington Post, The Daily Wire, Breitbart, and CNN and Fox would hardly have a reader basis if it wasn't for Facebook, or at least their reader basis would be very small. So Airsoft has gotten more popular and better because of Facebook, so it is nice. But when you make something bigger, like you take a magnifying glass over something, you tend to also amplify its imperfections. And so uh, back in the day, quote unquote, like, five years ago when I was just starting, well not starting, but when I was on airsoft forums, teching and all that kind of stuff, um, a lot of people would come in and learn how to tech. Some of them would get really good, some of them would kind of uh, have a slow to warm up kind of thing. And uh, so you had some people that would have a period of, and this is me defining tech narcissism. Uh, I gotta start from the very beginning though. You'd have uh, some people who would start out and it would be kind of hard from the tech. There would be some principles that they wouldn't get, some things would be kind of rusty for them. Uh, they would be slow. But after a while, they would really get it. And so they would kind of have like this uh, slow, you know, slow skill increase, but then it would shoot up real quick. And so uh, a graph like this would be kind of like this. You have your time on the bottom, so the time spent and then the skill level attained per time spent. And so as you go across, you see it's getting larger, but at the beginning, it kind of it t takes a while to um, uh, actually increase your skill level per amount of time spent. But after a while, you kind of shoot up real quick. And this probably does have some diminishing returns, technically speaking, because um, I would, like, for really good techs who really know what they're doing, they've been doing this for years, um, they're not going to have a skill increase every day. They're just going to be using their skill set in a manner that is... Uh, kind of vary in a pattern like uh, that's where uh, that, that's a that's where tech burnout comes into play but um, for this I'm just talking about people who are starting off uh, so what tech narcissism is specifically is this graph right here where people have this slow skill gain but then it shoots up real quick and at the time where it shoots up you get a lot of techs who really think they're just freaking Jesus in a, in a gearbox for some reason. And it's really, really irritating. And what has brought this to my attention, and I've always thought about it for a while, I've thought about it for a while now, but what's really brought it to a vlog topic for me is seeing something on Facebook. Uh, so on Facebook, Airsoft Tech and Q&A, um, there was recently a post by a, uh, I, won't, I won't get very specific, but I'll just, I'll get specific enough to where you could probably go find it if you wanted to, um, by a very popular teching company airsoft teching company, they were looking for new technicians in a certain area. And so they posted about it, I had some requirements, and they were really lenient when they're in their um, uh, requirements for the job, not so bad. And so at the bottom, the guy who made the post said, you know, personal message me, kind of like a quick resume, maybe a cover letter, and, you know, tell me why you think you should work for us. And so immediately right off the bat, everyone's jumping in like, well, I'm a great tech, but I don't live in X area. Or I'm a fantastic tech, I've been teching for two years. You know, those kinds of comments. And um, it's honestly like the, the teching community and Airsoft people will refer to it as a form of cancer because it's just, it's stupid. You get some people that have been teching for one to two years and they think that they're Jesus in a gearbox, like I was saying earlier. And this is really, really frustrating. It really just is a cancerous thing on the community. 
it really, it frustrates me personally because I'll admit I was probably like that at one point, but I don't think I was like that for a long time. Um, I hesitate to say I was like that for a long time, but I will, I will admit that maybe there was a time period where I was like that. I can't really, I can't really put a time frame where I, where I behaved like that. But you had a lot of people on this post commenting like, oh, I'm great at teching, you should hire me, here's why, here's why. I, mean, I built a 63 RPS DSG, like, like that's hard or something. Um, or like, like that's a major accomplishment or something. But uh, you had a lot of people just commenting and commenting and commenting about how awesome of a tech they were. And I just thought that was really kind of funny and just really uh, narcissistic of a lot of people just because it seemed very, very self-aggrandizing. And I understand that when you apply for a position, you wanna be self-aggrandizing, but you also want to be a little bit humble at the same time. And so, uh, for example, I've, I've been helping my girlfriend and I, well, like my girlfriend, I've been helping her write a resume because she's applying to a bunch of internships for college stuff. And so, and a, and a cover letter as well for a lot of these places. And so when you write these things or when you come off and you want to show why a company should hire you, you want to really primarily talk about the company and then talk about yourself because you want to say, here's why I want to work for you. Here's why I should work for you. Here's why you should hire me. And I would love it if you would hire me. That kind of step to where it looks like, you know, you respect the company and then it looks like you would give something to the company. And so a lot of people who were commenting were young. Here's, here's a couple boxes that they fit. They were young. They were, um, had a lot of time on their hands because they teched all the time. And then three, they hadn't teched for a long time at all. And so I could look at like every single person I was picking out, I could pick out and within a, within a year, I could go back on the forum search and see where they couldn't figure out how to shim or something like a basic setup, not just something like they were running into a major issue where like the bearings weren't actually fitting appropriately in the shell or they were risen too high in the shell. Like the flanges weren't really deep into the shell. And, um, I could go back on each of these people and find where there was a really definitive example within a year where they just had no clue what they were doing at all. And it wasn't like a lapse in memory or a lapse in, in uh, uh, ability. It was just they had no clue what they were doing. Like they just had never actually thought about something. And so that's kind of frustrating to me. Um, so that, that's really the definition of the example. Um, here's why I think it's actually bad for uh, people. Um, it kind of gives you, because Airsoft is a, is a hobby and some people would argue a sport. So let's just say a hobby because we can all agree it's a hobby. Um, airsoft is a hobby where a lot of people are young in it and a lot of people that are young look up to people that kind of come off as a socially dominant or a or a uh, personally confident individual and it's very easy to be confident in yourself especially over something like facebook it's much harder to be confident in yourself in person to person in, uh, interrelationships or person to group interrelationships but on social media facebook instagram or uh YouTube, it's much easier to be confident about yourself because you are talking to just a camera or you're typing into just a phone. It's really, really easy to make the, um, it's really, really easy for your mind to get the perception that you're just talking to a robot basically. And so a lot of these young techs, they sit there and they brag and brag and brag and brag about their abilities, even though they have trouble, some, have tr had trouble something that was so basic a month ago. Now listen, I, I appreciate that techs are learning and that they're accepting new information most of the time, but a lot of the time you, they just don't have ability and that's really frustrating for people. Um, and like I said, the reason why it's bad is because you have a lot of young people in the community and these young people in the community look up to a lot of people that are socially uh, dominant, I guess, in these Facebook websites or Facebook forums that have a lot of confidence as, as, as they type and as they comment and make posts. And so this gives some people kind of a bad reputation, I think. It, it gets them off on the wrong foot because you may take a step and say like, I know what I'm doing, I'm really confident in my ability on Facebook, but then when you actually get that person's going to work on it, you're having an issue and it's been two months since you had it shipped to you. And so you can't figure it out, you're having a lot of issues, you're asking on forums, and suddenly you don't look so good at what you do. And so I think it's kind of bad. I think it's less bad for the community, but more bad for someone personally. Uh, I just, I think that it's really unhealthy for a lot of people. And um, I just couldn't imagine the messages that that person making the post was receiving. Like I could just imagine how utterly uh, cancerous is just the best way to describe it. Cancerous messages he was getting from people who, who just thought they were Jesus Christ in a gearbox or something ridiculous. So I think it's just, I think it's more bad for people who are 
actually behaving like that, I think it's less bad for the community. The community usually sorts itself out, but I think for the person it can really, really damage them. Especially if they really jump headfirst into something ridiculous. Uh, like something really uh, complex or competitive. So I really think people, specifically young, confident techs with a lot of time on their hands, to take a step back and analyze what they're capable of and to just really question themselves and their abilities before they try to take a step forward. So that's why I think it's bad. I think it just gives people a really bad reputation. It makes them look like jerks to the people who are, uh, uh, I won't say smart, but more aware of their position than, they, than the person who's actually in the position. So it makes people look bad and it gets you stuck in a really bad corner, potentially. But uh, here's how you can prevent it though. Um, my advice, I, like I said, I, I would, I would think that there was a period where I was maybe like this, um, but I can't actually put a defined uh, you know, fence on it. I can't square away in my mind where there was a time frame where I really behaved like this. But how would I, how would I would think you should prevent it is uh, pretty simple, really. Uh, take a step back and realize that when you're on social media, because social media is a big problem here, really. It's the gap between people, and so, and it's where a lot of Facebook stuff, or a lot, not a lot of Facebook stuff, a lot of airsoft stuff actually occurs. A lot of conversation occurs there. I mean, you got, you got, you got to think that when we play airsoft, or airsoft is is two things. It's well, I'd say three, uh, but airsoft is the social media. Airsoft is playing, and airsoft is dressing up, and so and dressing up and tacking. I'll throw those two together, just so we have a nice three package there, and so. When you're not on social media talking to airsoft people, you are playing airsoft while with your awesome guns or with your awesome loadout, either two. Um, no, nothing against gear, gear dough guys. I, I have awesome gear too, sometimes. Uh, some of it's awesome. But um, anyway, I think the social media thing is a really big problem for people. So the best thing I think you can do to start out is just realize every single time you log on to Facebook and you're on one of those airsoft forums or you're on YouTube, or you're on Instagram, take a step back and just realize that there may be a barrier there, first of all. And second of all, realize that you're talking to people, that you're not talking to a robot, that you're not talking to someone to get social points. Um, in your mind, you may be thinking that, but as you're typing, as you're communicating, you should realize you're talking to a human being. And so uh, the second thing I think you should do, don't brag about yourself as often. Uh, that's just a given, I think, though. But a lot of people have problems with this. Uh, they'll see someone make a post saying like, hey guys, I just built this awesome 50 RPS DSG. It's one of my first airsoft builds. What do you think of it? And then you'll see in the comments, like 50 people comment, oh, I have a DSG that shoots 63 RPS. Isn't mine better than yours? You better step up my level. And then someone will comment and say, oh, I have one that shoots 70 on a 14.8 volt LiPo. So just stop bragging about yourself. Like seriously, just stop bragging about yourself. It's really frustrating. I mean, I don't see a problem in saying, making a post saying, hey, I built this, I built this DSG. It took me many hours of work and X, Y, Z, being really humble about it and then presenting your work. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you go out of your way to comment on someone else's post or kind of make the spotlight about you, I think you have a narcissistic problem there that I think is primarily because of social media and your overconfidence issues. Um, I think those, those are two good ways of preventing it. Another one is kind of like the first one. Just be humble about yourself. Really just take a step back and examine yourself and what you're thinking and why you're doing it. And so humility just looks like assuming... Here's what I think humility is in this in this context here. Especially when you get in debates with people. So like tech narcissistic individuals or techs who are narcissists tend to also have this idea that um, they're always right, and so, or they're right a lot of the time. And there's only a couple people that can prove them wrong. Like there's a hierarchy of people that can prove them wrong. So, um, so one of the ways that you can uh, prevent this is just being humble. And one of the ways you can be humble in this context is you can give people the benefit of the doubt. And I, I've been kind of bad on this too, I will admit. When I get in debates with people about my, sh for example, my, my, my shimming guide, I got into a debate with someone about my shimming guide. He said it was a guessing game. And I said, no, it's not a guessing game. X, Y, Z, here are my reasons. If anyone wants to see that debate, I can, pro or argument, or discussion, I can probably find it and link it maybe in some way. I'm not sure. I guess I could link it somehow. But uh, I'll, it, I'll leave that up to you guys if you want to find that for out or not. But uh, anyway, like I said, I've, I've been in those discussions where I have been convinced I'm right. And there's nothing wrong with being convinced you're right, but you better have all your bases squared in a row. And so at the end of the discussion, we, we got down at the end, he was like, yeah, I guess you're right if that is your measurement, if that is your idea of taking a measurement. That was basically the end conclusion. And 
but a lot of this, a lot in this, during this discussion, I realized that I might have been coming off a little bit narcissistic or a little bit overconfident or a little bit of a jerk. So I, I conceded some ground to him. I said, okay, you, you're right on this, this, and this, but here's why I'm right over here. I tried to find some middle ground. So that's one way that you can prevent being a narcissist or coming off as very narcissistic and very cancerous and toxic to your community and to yourself to a large degree is to just assume that maybe the person who's debating with you has a valid point of some sort and examining it and trying to find it and then granting him that point and then having your own point compared next to it. So say if you were arguing about what the best method of AOE correction is, like whether you should use sorbothane or whether you should use faucet washer, whether you should put this, the faucet washer between the piston head and a piston, yada, 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 I can go on forever. Take a step back, realize that maybe the person that learned it their way learned it for a different reason than why you learned your way. I've had some people actually message me on my Facebook account, uh, my Aerosol Tech Facebook account, and have said, this person says to correct AOE with a, you know, with this, and you said to use it with this. Are they wrong? And I'll say back, sometimes as I don't always respond to these messages, I'll say back, you know, no, they just learned a different way, and here's what they may be doing with that, and here's what you can do with mine. Uh, you know, maybe there are two right answers to this very technical uh, concept here. So, just giving your, uh, the person you consider an opponent, or the person you consider uh, debating against you, or arguing against you, giving them some benefit of the doubt really goes a long way a lot of the time. So, uh, that's just one way to also prevent coming up as very narcissistic and toxic to your community and yourself. So, that's gonna have to do it for this video though. Um, I've been rambling on for what looks to be almost 17 minutes now, which is quite a long time. And I'm a quick speaker too. So uh, maybe I'm a little too fast in this video, but uh, let's just run down through it one more time. So we talked about tech narcissism. We talked about what it is. Basically what it is, is it is an individual who acts very narcissistic, who hasn't been teching for a very long time, but has had a very sudden and short period of quick skill gain or quick skill attainment and thinks that they are very good based upon this very quick skill attainment over a short period of time, even though they're not very good because they haven't been teching for a long time and because they don't have many examples of their work actually being uh, accurate or competent. So that's our definition. Uh, why I think it's bad for people is I think it gives them a bad reputation. It makes people look like they're over, like they're better than what they actually are. So a quick example of that is say they s tell someone, hey, I can do X, Y, Z. And that person will say, great, I'll pay you X amount of dollars for it. And then they'll take that gun, they'll work on it, and they're two months in and they can't figure out how to you know properly shim it because it's being finicky. And they're now three months in and they can't figure it out. So that's a very basic problem. So uh, that's why I think it's bad. It gives you a bad reputation, it gets you off on the wrong foot, and it makes the thing all about you when it really shouldn't be. Uh, there should be something about you attacking, but there shouldn't, it shouldn't all be you. And then preventing it, just being humble, giving people the benefit of the doubt, taking a step back and realizing that a lot of what Aerosoft communication is is over social media. So in that social media gap just kind of makes kind of makes us more narcissistic than what we should be. So like I said, um, the primary one is social media be more humble on it and give people the benefit of the doubt. And then at the same time, uh, take a step back and just and just question yourself sometimes. So that's really all there is to it, I think. Uh, I don't think teching narcissism is going to go away unless like literally everyone just, just everyone takes up what my uh, guide is for this problem. But um, I think it's also a problem in every community. I just, I think it is. I haven't been in a single community that didn't have someone who was a very narcissistic individual that was pretty much like hyper into their community. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I have to do for this video. We're at 19 minutes right now. So uh, I'll see you guys next time, whichever video I do. I do have my camera here. I've got my laptop almost working. So hopefully I can get a really cool, actually edited video up about something. So uh, give me ideas in below if you wanna see something uh, or give me ideas on what you wanna see a guide on or a actual good video on. But until then, I will see you guys on the next video. See ya.